it's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Yelena Arseneva uh, from St. Petersburg State University, uh, but former from uh, uh, Geneva and uh, Bruxelles, am I correct? Lugano, Lugano and Bruxelles. Lugano, Lugano, Lugano and uh, Bruxelles. Uh, so uh, very welcome. So Yelena will speak about Varanoid diagrams, its variations and applications, and uh, where is the application that uh, Lena will explain by herself. So please, Lena. Thanks a lot. So, do I understand correctly that I'm speaking English now? Yes. All right. Good. Maybe it's even a bit easier for me, because I'm still thinking about these things and discussing them mostly in English. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot for introduction, Sergei. Uh, and let's start. So, here's my uh, very brief plan for... for uh, this talk. So I will introduce Voronoi diagrams, uh, talk about them a little bit, uh, then I will explain um, <clears throat> a little bit about uh, how they can be applied for yield prediction in VLSI, and I will explain what, what is yield prediction in VLSI as well, and uh, another little application and pattern analysis in the same thing in VLSI. So let's start uh, with the story. Uh, so that's my uh, favorite way to introduce Voronoi diagrams. So uh, I'm sorry, I will interrupt. See number of slides. I would like to remind that the duration of the seminar is hour and a half. Uh, okay. So <laughs> are you afraid that uh, I have too many slides? <laughs> or... So just, uh, yeah, feel free to interrupt me uh, and ask questions uh, when you have them. So that I uh, can, I don't know, stop and uh, and discuss a little bit. Uh, all right. So uh, here is the famous uh, post office problem uh, first asked uh, by Donald Knut, uh, and uh, here is uh, one way to formulate it. Uh, so suppose I'm still able to travel, uh, which uh, is not true right now, uh, but let's. Uh, suppose that at some point it will be true uh, and uh, I'm traveling in my favorite city uh, Roma and I'm having a tradition of um, sending postcards uh, when, uh, whenever I'm travel traveling and uh, well I'm uh, a little bit in a hurry and I want to reach uh, the uh, neighboring post office to send my postcards uh, to my friends so what I have is a, a map of Rome and uh, like just crossed uh, the locations of the post offices. So if I have this information and of course I know where I am right now because I can I now ask or read uh, the uh, number in the house, uh, then uh, how much uh, time do I need to spend to figure out to which post office should I walk and uh, send uh, and and do my thing. Uh, well, actually, there is nothing better than calculate all the distances to every post office uh, and find a minimum on which I will spend a linear time in the number of post offices. Uh, so I cannot do anything more smart than this uh, if I don't have any additional information. And now suppose uh, the administration, the tourist office of uh, Rome uh, notices that there are many tourists who do the same task and they would like to uh, make Rome more attractive in this sense. So they um, want to give the tourists uh, not only the map of Rome where they can ident identify post offices, but some uh, more thing. Uh, what we actually want from the tourist office is a subdivision of the map uh, into regions where each region uh, is assigned to a, to a specific post office. Uh, mainly, uh, namely, uh, each <coughs> for each region, every point uh, has the same uh, closest post office. If tourists uh, get this information, 
uh, already from the beginning. Uh, then uh, basically what they need is to locate uh, the face of, of this subdivision where they are. And then uh, it's already known for them uh, where to go. And this can be done easier uh, with some preprocessing. Uh, this can be done in logarithmic time. So in order to um, make life of the tourists easier, uh, the administration spends a little bit of time themselves uh, to uh, make some data structure uh, and hence the data structure to tourists. So this subdivision is actually uh, the subject of our talk. Uh, all right, so yeah, uh, here is just uh, the nearest post office to myself. And the formal uh, definition, uh, as you might already uh, be able to uh, derive uh, is as follows. Uh, so this is the standard definition of the, the, the most simple Voronoi diagram. Uh, I have a set of points uh, in the plane and uh, the Voronoi diagram is uh, the subdivision of the plane into regions according to the nearest uh, point in my point set, uh, in my given point set. And uh, I um, call uh, these points uh, of my Point set uh, sites. All right, so it was discovered and rediscovered many times. Um, and ah, okay, so here's a little more explanation. So suppose uh, uh, consider the region of of uh, this big uh, marked point. So for 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 every point uh, here in this uh, dashed region. Uh, this big marked point will be the nearest uh, among the sites. Okay, so if you have any questions here, uh, please ask. Because it's, uh, it's important to understand this concept. Okay, so if you notice that you have questions afterwards, you can also ask. Uh, so just uh, a little uh, story about uh, Voronoi diagrams uh, as an illustration. Um, so uh, there was uh, a pandemic of cholera uh, in London uh, at uh, 1954 and well, maybe a couple of years before 1954 as well. Uh, and uh, people at that time thought that cholera is um, uh, like a coronavirus, uh, is transmitted uh, by the air and uh, something like this. So they were not sure, but they were supposing like this. Uh, and at some point, uh, some physician, uh, John Snow, sat and just marked all the... Um, houses that, uh, where were uh, infected people uh, in his area uh, and he realized by doing that he realized that all of them are actually a Voronoi cell more or less uh, of uh, one particular water pump so he uh, understood that all these people were uh, taking their water from that particular water pump uh, and that's actually how they uh, got infected and uh, this is uh, this was actually a big a big thing uh, in in medicine because uh, well people learned that uh, cholera is transmitted uh, via water not uh, not other way so this is how maybe this is the the, the most important thing which Voronoi diagram uh, was used for uh, another important thing uh, to to keep in mind. Uh, I will not talk about it afterwards, but still, uh, it's a dual graph of uh, a triangulation, uh, which is called Delaunay triangulation, and uh, it's known uh, as, uh, in some senses, uh, the best triangulation of, uh, of a given point set, uh, and uh, it's, it's widely used uh, in computer graphics and uh, other fields where you need a good-looking triangulation or a triangulation with uh, as less thin triangles as possible. Uh, okay. So, but those are just illustrations, so I will not uh, really elaborate on 
on the learning triangulations more. Uh, so of course, uh, for, for computational geometry, main question like for uh, people who really do research in Voronoi diagrams, the main, uh, the main question is uh, how to compute it fast. And uh, well, it's quite early uh, where people uh, devised an algorithm uh, to do it in n log n time. Uh, and this is actually an optimal thing because you can, um, if, if you could uh, compute the Voronoi diagram faster uh, in a comparison based uh, model, uh, then you could uh, sort faster than n log n, uh, which is known to be not true. So in, in some model, uh, in, uh, I, I would say in most um, famous model uh, and uh, most uh, well-known well model for, for working with uh, algorithms uh, in computational geometry, uh, this is the optimal algorithm. Uh, so, yeah, so the question is uh, whether people are done with, uh, with this. So we have an object, we have a, an optimal algorithm to compute it, we have even a proof that uh, this is optimal, you cannot do better. Uh, and, uh, well, the question is not really, uh, because this uh, object has many variations. And this is uh, the main uh, topic of, of our talk. Uh, so, the main idea here is that, uh, of course, it's, it's nice if you can model your problem by points in the plane uh, but, and, and the nearest Euclidean distance. Then things are very nice and cute, uh, but not uh, always uh, your, your problem is, is well, well modeled like this, right? So, yeah, so here are many uh, applications. Uh, well, there are more applications than uh, what I, I'm showing here. Uh, of uh, different kinds of Warren diagrams. And in, this, in each of these applications, uh, most of the problems are uh, not really about points uh, in the plane, uh, but about more complex uh, things. And uh, here is how we can generalize Warren diagram. Uh, so first of all, there are different types, right? So you want uh, a nearest object to yourself, you want the farthest object to yourself, or you want kth nearest object, for some reason. And we actually will see uh, the, uh, this variation uh, afterwards. Uh, then, sides can be not points, but, for example, line segments, polytops, polygons, if you're in the plane, uh, curves, and maybe something else, uh, sets of points. Uh, space can be also not a Euclidean plane, but something different. Uh, D-dimensional space, polygonal domain, uh, which is a poly uh, um, simple polygon with holes, for example, and you want uh, your distance to be shortest path uh, among these obstacles. Polyhedral terrain, uh, which is uh, a very good model for uh, Earth uh, surface, right? So because Earth is not really flat, and even in uh, small uh, even in small, uh, how do I say, vicinity of some point, it's not flat because it has uh, height as well. Uh, and then the third, uh, the, the fourth uh, thing, the variable thing in uh, the Werner diagram concept is uh, the distance. So you can have, for example, Euclidean distance, uh, which is the standard thing. You can have additively weighted distance, which is uh, each side has also some weight which you will add to, to every distance where, where you compute uh, a distance from a point to a site, uh, or mu multiplicatively weighted, uh, which is you um, multiply distance by some parameter. Uh, convex distances uh, where your unit ball is not really a ball but a convex shape and then you consider uh, the smallest homotets of, of this shape, for example, uh, Hausdorff distance uh, and other things. So there, there can be many variations of this. So if uh, you have questions, please ask. All right. 
So if not, then uh, I will proceed and I will proceed with the uh, applications uh, which, which I'm aware of uh, in the LSI design. All right, so yeah, let me uh, give you some my understanding what is uh, VLSI design. So it's um, an acronym for very large scale integration design. Uh, so these are just uh, manufacturing of uh, chips which are inside all our electronics, right? Uh, inside computers, inside cell phones, etc. And uh, if you consider I guess computer chips, uh, uh, there you have a lot of uh, objects uh, stacked uh, and placed uh, in layers uh, very close to each other. Uh, so close that uh, they, uh, when they print uh, the, the design, they already start experiencing some uh, electromagnetic and uh, so some uh, issues which are um, not for, for big objects but for, for the small objects uh, because they are so close to each other and so small in, in dimensions. And okay, and we want to predict uh, yield of the chip. So um, printing such a chip is a very uh, costly process. So you cannot uh, if you want to know uh, whether your chip, uh, so you design the chip, suppose, right? So you uh, draw this um, on paper or in some software program, and you want to know uh, whether it's a good design or not. Uh, and goodness is measured by, um, like, when you start manufacturing it, uh, what is the percentage of uh, chips which will work? Uh, and what is the percentage of chips which will be spoiled uh, by because you you cannot do it ideally so it's it's never a hundred percent right but you want to uh, design your chip so that uh, it will be as close to hundred percent as, as as possible right so yeah basically uh, there is something uh, some uh, way of estimating uh, this yield uh, and uh, first of all it's just you have several stages of printing and for each stage you have some loss and then you multiply the, 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 the yield of each stage so this y is, is yield of, of, of one stage uh, then it, at one step um, uh, they, uh, it's uh, calculated as, as uh, follows, uh, where alpha is just some parameter, uh, which is a heuristic. Uh, then D is average number of de defect per unit. Uh, so you expect that uh, you have provided almost vacuum, uh, you know, like uh, no dust, nothing. Then you know that this D is small. If you are in just a normal room, uh, then probably you will have a lot of uh, dust particles, etc. And this AC is uh, uh, is the important thing, which is depend uh, which depends on how you draw your uh, VLSI layout. Uh, so it's calculated as follows: uh, it's an integral uh, from zero to infinity, uh, where a of R, so uh, it's parameterized by R, uh, R is the radius of defect, uh, A of R is the area uh, where the, uh, such that uh, in every point uh, of this area, uh, if you place a defect of this radius, it will cause a fail, uh, it will break your, your design, and uh, dr is the, the density function, which is defined as follows. Uh, so here, alpha, c, p, q are some parameters. I will not really elaborate on, on them, but uh, if, if you want, uh, yeah, I, I, I will share the article where uh, it's all explained. Uh, so basically, yeah, the, the bottleneck uh, thing here, if you want to predict yield uh, as a, uh, 
as, as it depends on uh, how you draw your VLSI layout, is to calculate the critical area. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is the main question. And uh, basically, uh, for a long time uh, in telecommunication uh, industry, uh, approximate me uh, methods were used. For example, Monte Carlo me uh, method, where you uh, just pick some so some values of R, uh, calculate somehow your critical area, uh, maybe spending lots of time. Uh, and then you approximate this function and uh, and, uh, and you get your AC. Uh, or grid methods uh, where you uh, basically draw a grid uh, on your layout and uh, calculate for, for each point of a grid, calculate uh, the radi for which uh, this point will matter and then also sum it up somehow. Uh, but all of them are approximate. And uh, here is another idea uh, on how to actually compute it uh, exactly. So you probably want to sub subdivide uh, the layout and the interior of, uh, of your layout uh, into cells uh, so that in each cell, uh, this uh, AC is very easy to compute, and then you just combine the results. So probably now you you see the you notice the sim similarity to, to my uh, post office problem. So it's the same thing uh, for for each. Uh, if I need some result for each point uh, in the space, for each point inside the layout, then I will probably uh, need to resort to approximation uh, approximate solutions or spend may maybe a lot of time. Uh, if uh, I manage to subdivide uh, my space into some cells where, uh, for, for, for which every point has uh, in some way uh, similar, a similar result in my computation, uh, then I can do it uh, much faster. So maybe you can uh, now guess that uh, this subdivision will be some kind of foreign diagram. Okay, so let me tell a little bit about uh, the defects. Uh, so they can be modeled, uh, th this is the most common thing, uh, right? So they modeled either as squares or as circles because these are simple things. Of course, uh, defects in real life can be any shape. Um, and uh, these are three types of defects I will talk about. So breaks, for example, you have some elements uh, on your layout and uh, a, def uh, a defect breaks it if, like, m uh, my, my square breaks it if uh, it overlaps it so that uh, the, the, the difference between uh, the shape and my square is uh, two different uh, uh, connected components. So somehow it disconnects, it overlaps my shape and disconnects it. Uh, or it just uh, overlaps it so that it crosses two different boundaries of my shape, as, as, uh, as in the right uh, picture. So it's still connected, but... Uh, Can I tell that it changes topology, the uh, removing of the yep. square changes topology of the... Right, yeah, yeah, thank you. So that's perfect. Uh, this is how it is. Uh, then shorts, well, still changes topology, but uh, in a different way. So, so something is sitting there which uh, co which connects things which shouldn't be connected otherwise. You know, like there is this uh, square now, and uh, the the two the two elements were disconnected, but now they are connected. And uh, via blocks, so. Uh, I will tell about this a little bit more afterwards, uh, but uh, already now, uh, let's say, so uh, there are layers where uh, things, where, uh, so, so to speak, useful elements are placed, and they, uh, there are layers where just, uh, just wires are placed. 
So wires are going from, from one layer to another uh, through some other layer. And uh, these, these, call, uh, these layers called via layers. Uh, so there are just um, holes uh, where wires are going from, from above to below or from below to above, doesn't matter. Uh, and so suppose I have uh, uh, some connection and uh, usually uh, the connection is actually duplicated because if something happens and this connection is uh, uh, is not valid after a printing, then the whole chip, uh, if, if there was a single connection, then the whole chip can be uh, thrown away. No, it will not work. So they do duplicate connections. Uh, so, yeah, if I have a group of connections now, uh, and still I manage somehow to have a big defect, uh, a big particle or something that uh, appeared and uh, overlaps everything in the group, uh, then yes, I'm in trouble. So uh, via blocks is. Uh, but topology still changes. <laughs> topology still changes. That's true. Yes. Okay. So, but here, yes, if if I just overlapped two or three or four of of these uh, squares, but uh, some square would survive, then then uh, I still would be fine. Okay. Oh, okay. So I are... didn't got this here. So thanks. <laughs> Right. So these are three three types of uh, defects uh, which we will talk about. And all right. So let's proceed with the first one, which is breaks. Just the same picture here. And uh, okay. So I have uh, my layout. So here are two shapes, but of course there are much uh, more of them. And uh, it's very reasonable to assume that uh, they are rectilinear polygons, uh, meaning that uh, the sides are parallel to axis, to, to x axis, to y axis. So here's the way to, to use uh, Warner diagrams to compute uh, the, the, the AC. So, first of all, I um, draw the core segments, uh, where core segments are, let me try to annotate, so they are centers of the minimal squares uh, to, to break the thing, no? like if I place a center here and I draw a square, then I will have a break. And I want the minimal ones. Okay, so it's not a very square square, but you probably get the idea. Or if I uh, put the center of a square here and I draw the square, I still got the break. Okay, so I find all the uh, centers of minimal squares and where minimal are, well, you can imagine, uh, you can imagine uh, moving the center a little bit and uh, seeing uh, the minimum size of square for, for with this fixed center. If uh, the minimum size of square uh, changes, uh, it gets less, then, then your square is not minimal. All right. So those are my core segments. And I can so it's actually also a variation of Warner diagrams because uh, these are uh, bisectors between the, uh, pairs of sides, uh, pairs of sides of the border of the polygon. Uh, but uh, I go further and I compute the Warner diagram of these green things, of the core segments. And uh, because I'm now considering the square uh, shape defects, then my metric should be L infinity. So my unit ball will be a square. Uh, so the Voronoi diagram uh, with respect to this L infinity norm and also weighted uh, as follows. Oh, sorry, how can I? Uh -huh, here. So 
each each of the green segments, well, point is a, also a degenerate segment, uh, let's say, uh, degenerate segment. Uh, each segment is weighted as follows. Um, you compute uh, the distance to the boundary, which is basically the same distance for, for two, the two boundaries. So let me draw it. Um, sorry. Aha, uh -huh, here. So, for example, this segment. So, the distance to the boundary of the polygon is this, which is the same as this. Uh, and, yeah, we, we are considering the, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the minimum uh, distance, uh, all right, and uh, and this is this is the weight of my segment. So now uh, the distance. So uh, the definition of the Warren diagram is the same. I want a subdivision of uh, the well plane in in my uh, case. It's bounding box because uh, there is nothing interesting outside the layout for us um, into regions. Uh, so that for, for each point in the region, uh, the nearest uh, site, which is the green segment, uh, the nearest site is the same. So if I consider this region, for example, here, for each point here, uh, the nearest site will be this one. So according to which distance this is the nearest site, according to uh, this, it's okay. So yeah, uh, d of uh, p and s is uh, the l infinity distance, and uh, omega of s is is the weight of s. So I, uh, in order to calculate a distance from myself to a uh, segment, uh, I calculate first the, the real L infinity distance and then I add uh, its weight. So why uh, this is good for us? So this is uh, this is additively weighted for the diagram because I'm adding the weight of, of the site when calculating the distance. So why it's good? Uh, Okay, so what should I do to stop annotating here? So, if I take any point here, uh, I would like to know uh, what is the minimum size of the defect uh, which will break something, if if it's centered in this, in this point, right? Uh, and the minimum size of the defect uh, will actually be the distance to, the weighted distance to it, the owner of its Mm, Warner region. So what do I mean by this? So I'm asking, so I'm having my point here, right? And I'm asking in which region my point lies of, of my diagram, of my subdivision. Uh, well, the answer is this one, the, the upper region. Uh, and I'm asking who is the owner of this region, to which side it corresponds. So the answer is this side. And then I'm asking, what is the distance uh, between uh, my point, uh, well, call it P, my point P and this side, according to my measure of the distance, the weighted distance. Uh, so it will be the distance between P and S, which is this. Well, let me maybe draw it with a different color. So it will be this plus the weight of uh, S, which is actually the distance from S to the boundary, which is this. All right, so uh, this means that uh, if I draw a square uh, centered at my point P uh, with the, um, well, radius uh, in, in the sense of L infinity, right? So uh, uh, this distance, uh, d of uh, p and s plus the weight of s, uh, then this square will reach uh, this this boundary. So it actually will cause it. It will be the the minimal square which will cause uh, the break. 
in my uh, in my uh, design. Right. So for every point uh, inside the layout, uh, I after I build this Warner diagram, I can very easily ask uh, answer what is the distance. Um, what is, what is the minimum size of the square to, to, to break my layout uh, if placed uh, in my point? Is that um, clear? Uh, other questions? Colleagues, please. Sorry? Okay, then let's proceed. Right. So yeah, the, the idea here is that we um, subdivided uh, our space into some equivalent, like all the points into some equivalence classes with respect to how the distance, uh, how, how the minimum uh, defect size will uh, need to be computed. And after that, it's very easy. To, to the the uh, AC is very easy to compute. So I will not reproduce it, but uh, they just algebraically derive some uh, sum of, of several terms, which, uh, which you uh, just sum up and, uh, and you have AC. All right, so this is it for a break defect. Then we have other defects. Yeah, let me just erase the drawings here. And now I will be able to move. All right. So I uh, yeah. Okay. And it's important to to mention that uh, the Warren diagram can be complete uh, computed in n log n time. Uh, this kind of Warren diagram. So I used L infinity metric here and the square shape of uh, defect, but I could also use the circle shape of defect, and there it will be just not L infinity but L two. Right, and if I if I want, I also can uh, do it in any L L P metric. But uh, basically, these are the the, the most uh, useful for for practice. And both uh, both diagrams can be computed in n log n time. Okay. Here, n is the number of uh, green parts. Right, right, right. Number of mm -hmm. sides. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so very nice. And uh, what what is good about it is that uh, beforehand it was a very uh, computationally extensive uh, task, and uh, only approximate solution uh, w would be obtained. But now it's exact and uh, very easy. Uh, so yeah, sort of the same scheme uh, applies to short defects. So uh, to remind you, short is uh, if I have. Um, Square again here. I, I will show it uh, with squares. If I have a square which uh, introduces uh, the connection which was not um, not supposed to be there. So uh, here is uh, the L infinity diagram of uh, the shapes of my layout uh, with. Um, with weight one, so it's not weighted. Uh, it's just uh, so everybody has weight one, and now it is a diagram of um, polygons. And uh, in order to uh, help computing the AC for short defects, I need not this diagram but another one, which is a second order diagram. So I thought that it's better to explain it. Uh, like uh, first showing the first order diagram. So the standard Warner diagram is the first order diagram, uh, which means I need the first uh, closest uh, side. And I subdivide my space according to the first closest side. Uh, second order, well, I need the second closest side. So in order to obtain a second order diagram from the first order diagram, I take a first well, I have my suppose I have my first order diagram. I take all the each region for each region. I do what I do for the left uh, leftmost region here. I compute the 
first order diagram uh, of the rest of the, the sites inside as restricted to this region. So I just ask, uh, okay, so uh, those points are were closer to my to my site, which is this F shape thing. Uh, and what is the second one? Well, uh, let's let's uh, solve it with the Warner diagram. Right, so I just have a Warner diagram overlapped with the, with the Warner diagram, and uh, so now now this uh, after I do it with every region, I will obtain uh, the subdivision according to the second uh, nearest shape, and this is useful for me for the short uh, defects. Um, here's why. So. Uh, again, I have a point and I want to know what is the minimum uh, size of the square uh, the defects should, uh, should, should have if centered at that point uh, to do something bad to my, to my design. So now partially overlapping a, a shape is, is okay, right? So I'm, I'm not changing the topology. <laughs> Uh, but uh, if it's uh, big enough to reach the boundary of the second shape, which is the second closest shape to, to this point, then, uh, then I will have a problem. So the size of the smallest square to cause the fault uh, here is exactly uh, the distance to the second uh, nearest uh, polygon. From my uh, from any point actually. So let me just draw a little bit. Right. So my diagram actually uh, knows because it's a subdivision according to the second uh, nearest uh, site. Uh, so if I locate my point in my diagram, I ask in which face I, uh, my point lies. Um, then it says it's a face of this shape. And then I just calculate the L infinity distance from, from my point to this shape. And this is exactly the uh, size of the square, uh, of the smallest square to cause the, the break if its center is in my point. Oh, it's, uh, sorry, not a break, but a short. So, Again, uh, I subdivide my, my space into some equivalent classes uh, from, uh, for, for, for which uh, it's easy, uh, easy to understand. Uh, so for, for each point in one region, uh, the, size of, the, the uh, size of the minimum uh, Square will be very easy to compute because it's just the at infinity distance to the owner of this region. All right. So yeah, and that's it. So if I, if I compute my diagram, uh, then it's very easy to compute this AC for for short defects. So and again, uh, this is an easy diagram. It can be computed in analog on time. Uh, and uh, the uh, critical area uh, for short defects as well can be computed in, in log n time. So, are there any questions here? Uh, sorry, maybe late question, but, but uh, why n log n? I mean, from where it comes? Aha, uh -huh, sure, yeah, let me... I just can draw here. Um, so first of all, uh, the subdivision is for, for the standard one diagram. It's a planar uh, planar subdivision. So it's a plane graph. It has a linear number of uh, edges and vertices. Of course, you can list them. You, you need to list them all. So you cannot really spend less than. And of course, you can also you you need to read the input. So you can by no means you can spend uh, less than n. Uh, so n log n is good uh, because well people people know how to do it and actually sorting algorithms um, somehow generalize to to uh, to building Warner diagrams. 
So actually, the, there are a bunch of sorting, the, the classical sorting algorithms, which you can transform into, with, with some work, into algorithms for building the Warner diagram. So, so in this talk, we presume that uh, the knowledge how to compute Warner diagram is, is how to say, prerequisite. Right. Well, it's, uh, it's not. You, you can just, uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, we should trust you. We can. Yeah, you can just trust. We can. Uh, Okay. Construct Varadoy diagram. Uh, yes. Right. How many how many nodes do you have? Uh, uh, it's a linear number. Linear so number. yeah, I, I I always forget how how many exactly the maximum. But uh, I mean, you have n n faces, and you have a planar graph. Yeah, I see that. But uh, I'm thinking, is it hundreds or millions? So. Ah, in this uh, practical problem, yes. I think it's uh, more like thousands and maybe more because, uh, well, uh, I, I'm not completely sure for, for this exact case, but uh, from what I see from my discussions with Huawei, even for a phone, they have uh, the number of elements is uh, thousands. This is the order of magnitude. And I imagine that for, for a computer, you have more. Uh, so so yeah, this is my... That, uh, the N log N alg algorithm you mentioned, it's probably uh, the one that involves parabolas, isn't it? Uh, well, you can, uh, you, can do it, uh, you can do a sweep line, yeah. That's true. You can also do divide and conquer. You can do what else? You can do convex scale computation in uh, one dimension higher. And I guess convex scale is uh, probably good practical. Is it n log n two? The convex scale one. Uh, you, you're saying there are different algorithms to compute the Voronoi diagram. Right. And. Uh, and they are all L log N, right? Well, not all, of course. Well, more than one, anyway. Sure, yep. Okay, okay, fine, thank you. Uh, yeah, but probably Julia's question was uh, why you cannot do better than N log N, because we just discussed that you can cannot do better than N. You, well, you can trust me that you can do N log N. Um, well, you can do well, sorting in linear time for that matter. It's right, right, yeah. Numbers. Right, so you, if you have uh, your vertices in unsorted uh, sequence, uh, then if you um, uh, if if you ca uh, calculate your Voronoi diagram, you will get uh, you you will be able to derive a sorted uh, sorted sequence of your yeah yeah I see thanks. Um, numbers yes so yeah here uh, one. One way to see it is just um, oh, what do we did? Uh, you have your numbers here; they are not sorted, and then you lift them to parabola. You compute well. Convex hull is uh, is enough, but Warner diagram will give you convex hull as well because this is uh, all the unbounded regions. Uh, and uh, yeah, you you have them sorted because you can uh, travel yeah. now from, from from one phase to another to another, etc. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So yeah, here uh, this is the the variation of the Warner diagram to sh uh, to solve the short uh, defects problem, and uh, yeah, uh, for for the via blocks, uh, it's it's my favorite Warner diagram. Uh, so we'll spend a little bit more time probably on this. Uh, yeah, so just recall that we have uh, this. Vias, uh, which help, which are holes to to put the wires between different layers. 
and uh, of course our dust particles or whatever can uh, be there while printing and uh, break some views. So people are smart and they copy their views. So there are uh, groups which I show with colors. So actually uh, the uh, blue things are the same uh, same thing. So if, if I lose one of the blue uh, things but the other one is okay, uh, then I'm, I'm fine. Uh, uh, and so on. So now, yes, if I have uh, my particle of dust and uh, it is this size, uh, I'm still fine because one, one blue is, is, is survived. But this size is not good. So this is the minimum size. And now I, I switch to circles, but uh, yeah, because uh, it's uh, uh, more uh, more familiar for me uh, in, in this context. But uh, it's still the same. It can be also modeled with squares, of course. So this is the critical radius of my point, uh, same as, as previously. And the Hauser form diagram uh, gives me the critical area because uh, it's so for the point uh, it gives me the nearest shape nearest uh, cluster of the of the sites the, I, I would say nearest color uh, according to the farthest distance in the in the color so I'm in this uh, blue region because the blue is the nearest uh, where the distance to a cluster is the distance to the farthest point of the cluster. So this is the point where my distance is reached. And this is exactly what I need for uh, if I need to um, overlap everything in one cluster, right? Yeah, so if, if I have a defect of exactly the size of, uh, of the distance from my point to the site uh, where it uh, belongs, then I will have uh, the, the problem during man manufacturing. So yeah, here's why, uh, why it's uh, very interesting, not only because of this problem, but uh, just because it's very natural generalization and uh, it's uh, considerably more complicated than a standard Warner diagram. Uh, so it's not uh, the planar graph of, uh, of, of size uh, order of n anymore, it can be more than this uh, in particular. So. Yeah, and also uh, it's applied, uh, well, bec because it solves this critical area problem. Uh, it has some applications in theory. Uh, so this is the illustration for the stabbing circle problem, uh, which I like uh, the most. Suppose I have uh, a bunch of children. Uh, this is the even number of children, and uh, I I want to I want to play. So for for some reason they are glued to the floor. Don't ask me why. Uh, maybe it's just easier to deal with children if they are not moving. Uh, and I want to play a game with them. Uh, so I stand somewhere and I uh, tell a word, and in each pair. So they are really paired. They are matched. Uh, with each other. Uh, so from each pair exactly one guy hears me and the other one does not. So the question is whether I can do it at all for this uh, arrangement of, uh, of the children uh, and what are the different uh, sets of children which I can uh, get this way. So yeah, so the Warner diagram helps, uh, the Hausdorff Warner diagram helps uh, solving this question, along with some other diagram which I will not really explain here. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, as, as usual in the research about Warner diagram, the, the question is how to compute it fast. Uh, 
so the stru structure is uh, more complicated than the standard Fourier diagram. And I will just say that uh, it depends on the crossings. So uh, here are the convex hulls of the clusters. Uh, so my all my uh, points of the same color, I uh, draw a convex hull of them, and this is what I get. So if uh, the convex hulls uh, behave like circles, meaning that they intersect twice or, or no time, then we say that they are non-crossing. And the diagram is nice, and uh, it has complexity, order of n, and everything is good. If they don't, because of course two, two convex polygons can intersect more than twice, uh, then uh, the diagram is more complicated. And uh, here are just the results, because beforehand I was saying that uh, the previous diagrams were just computed in n log n time, and it's easy. Uh, here it's not so easy. And uh, the green things are the best to the to date best algorithms. Uh, they are still, we, we don't know whether they are optimal or not, because we don't have much in lower bound. Uh, so it looks like additional log, like uh, log uh, logarithmic multiplicative factor is needed, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, we didn't prove it. Uh, so yeah, basically uh, the, the bottom line here is that uh, if uh, the clusters are behaving nicely, then you can compute it in n log squared uh, n time. And this additional multiplicative factor of log is uh, what uh, what what is questionable here, whether it's needed or not. Uh, but nobody knows how to compute it faster. Uh, if uh, you your clusters are very interconnected in this way, like you have many many crossings between every cluster, every pair of clusters, uh, then it's more like uh, quadratic. Uh, time to compute it. No, I'm sorry, but what means exp? Expected uh, or expected. exponent? I hope no, expected. No, no, no. Oh. It's expected. So basically, uh, in this context, uh, we can we can use uh, randomness, but uh, in a way that uh, the time complexity is expected, uh, but the result is always uh, exact and correct. So it's it's this type uh, this type of randomized algorithms. Okay, so yeah, so so I I will not really explain uh, about the algorithms because uh, we, we we don't really have uh, so much time for this. But you can ask me if if you want uh, afterwards. Uh, so what we would talking about uh, in this part is yield prediction using Voronoi diagrams. Uh, so we saw that uh, the critical area uh, could can be easily computed exactly uh, using like for different defects different Voronoi diagrams. Uh, so L infinity weighted uh, L infinity in, in parentheses because if you want to model your defects as circles, then you can do it with L2 for diagrams, and this is not a problem. And um, yeah, so for, for shorts you use two, uh, order two for diagrams, for via blocks you use Hausdorff for diagrams. Uh, so this thing was uh, really a part of, uh, so became a part of a commercial tool uh, at IBM. And I think that this is an important, uh, I, well, success story of of uh, geometric algorithms because, of course, many people because it's a you know mathematical area, right? Many people just uh, solve uh, questions which they think are interesting, but they are not so connected uh, with uh, uh, with uh, real uh, applications. Some people do applications, but then they don't really publish in theoretical journals uh, that much. Uh, but here, yeah, uh, here it uh, managed uh, to, to do this, uh, both things. And uh, what I consider nice, so this is 
I guess related to your question about uh, n log n and uh, like w what are n and uh, what uh, what is the runtime. So of course, probably the runtime is not uh, very uh, very uh, how do you say small, but compared to what they had before, uh, they say that uh, they have improvements of more than uh, sixty times, and and this is somehow impressive, right? And yeah, for, for, for them also, giving exact answer is some, you know, um, so something also very important, because beforehand they could just approximate things. Okay, so yeah, so, so, so this story is a part of the, uh, of, of, of some commercial tool. Yeah, and just uh, a small uh, thing uh, in addition to, to that, so it's another story. Uh, we have uh, VLSI design and we want to not really predict the yield as we were discussed before, discussing before, but uh, we just want to look at it and identify some dangerous spots, uh, meaning that spots which are most likely to be uh, printed differently than uh, it, it was uh, expected. And for that, uh, yeah, the warning diagrams also were used. Uh, so, yeah, this, this is one example of it, uh, which is called comp. So you have some element and you have also some other elements which are going close to it. And uh, well, th this is some knowledge of uh, of people who who are into this manufacturing processes. That here it's most more it's it's very likely that uh, the break will will happen actually here uh, because because things are so small. Uh, so those are some uh, effects which wouldn't be there if if. For the, the chips were big enough. Um, and uh, people would like to uh, just give in a pattern because it's a very big drawing of uh, with many elements, right? So you cannot really look at it uh, by, by hand. You, you want some automatic procedure to, to, to see what, what are the uh, dangerous places. And uh, yeah, the diagrams were uh, applied uh, in this task uh, task as well. So you also build a Voronoi diagram of uh, of the boundary segments, the L infinity Voronoi diagram. And basically, you go over the diagram, over the edges of the diagram, and you identify several uh, several patterns, which are, for example. Um, the center of the Voronoi edge exact inside the polygonal shape of minimal width, uh, and this is likely to be uh, to, to to cause a break. Uh, the other examples are the center of Voronoi edge inside a long polygonal shape that has close to it. This is what I told you: close to it, uh, other shapes. And this can be uh, identified just working uh, on the edges of the diagram. So again, instead of just processing the whole thing, uh, all the points, uh, maybe approximating, maybe uh, drawing a grid on it and uh, looking at the nodes, uh, you can build the diagram and you can um, just explore it uh, edge by edge. So here the uh, the problem is not so well formulated algorithmically. So actually, it was an experimental result, uh, and the experiments were saying that uh, also as comparison to the previous uh, method of uh, discovering these dangerous places, uh, th there are some th there is some progress. You no, know? like uh, this is improvement in, in percentage uh, for, for for the sample uh, sample data and uh, yeah for some 
cases uh, there is no improvement. For some cases, the improvement is, uh, I don't know, 8,300. So, yeah, it's a, it's a reasonable, uh, reasonable thing to do. This is what it says, I guess. Okay. So, yeah, here's just the summary of what we saw. Uh, we saw the warning diagrams. Uh, we somehow discussed that it has a lot of variations. Uh, we saw some variations which are useful for uh, for for yield prediction in VLSI design. And uh, yeah, and we we briefly uh, told talked about uh, the VLSI pattern analysis and applications of the warning diagrams there. So yeah, I guess this is all I wanted to say. So thanks for the attention and uh, other questions. So thank you very much, Elena. So uh, let's thanks, Elena. Yes, in Zoom it's not so loudly. Yes, it, it's more these pictures and so on. Oh, uh, yes, so questions? So while uh, we check uh, so, in, yes, yeah? I, ha yeah. I have a question. Uh, so uh, can uh, we return uh, to mm -hmm. uh, when you were talking about block? Yes. Uh, Sorry? So you told that these are uh, when you were talking oh. about via block. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Mm, maybe earlier. Mm -hmm. So you told uh, like these are holes. Yes. Uh, uh, and they are divided into some clusters, yes? Right. Do you have these clusters predefined or you can choose the color such that uh, in some sense they are in better position? Uh, so here uh, in, in this setting, we already have received the design, right? So everything is predefined. I see. Uh, of course, I, I imagine that... Uh, so. So the task is to measure how good is the design. I imagine that uh, if the measurement result says that your design is not so good, then probably people will reconsider, right? But uh, but uh, with... and uh, can you can you I don't know uh, make an algorithm that it gives the best possible design according? Uh, I mean, you can also choose the positions, yes, the colors, the clusters. And uh, you can choose the best possible design that uh, it is. I think it's a pretty complex problem because uh, because they want many things. Yeah, for example, right now Huawei is asking uh, about uh, something like this, no, from us. They want to minimize the wires. They want to minimize the number of holes. Uh, so it's uh, a different thing. But uh, we are pretty sure that this is NP hard problem. Uh, so, yeah, in, in some sense, we should de de devise some algorithms, and there are some algorithms to do it, uh, probably, uh, but they are not so efficient. Because, because yeah, th there is a lot of flexibility, uh, and because it's not so easy to move uh, a hole, you, uh, when you move a hole, uh, something else will change in your design. No, maybe you will have a lot of uh, wire going somewhere far, right? Uh, so you probably don't want this. And this is always a trade-off. So I, I think that uh, it doesn't make so much sense to consider uh, only the pro the problem about holes uh, without uh, other other things which are uh, which are there. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. Yeah. Colleagues, uh, so I uh, let I ask questions. Question, yes. Yeah? So as far as uh, I got from the talk, there are two types of tasks 
Varanoid diagram. One type is, okay, you, you choose a type of Varanoid diagram and question is how to construct it. Right. Yes. And uh, another type is that you have a certain problem, uh, how, how to find the, uh, I don't know, a proper rectangle, a, a, a position of uh, the square which will break you and so on. So in that case, uh, you have to kind of find proper Varanoid diagram and after this, how to say, reduce your problem to, to, to this Varanoid diagram. Uh, so what is uh, uh, the, the uh, f first of all, in the, in the science of Varanoid diagrams? Yes, first question. Does there exist a third direction? And what among those directions is, uh, what is the most ambitious, say, how to say, problem in this direction? That's a very tricky question. Uh, I think that it's always either a question about application, the diagram somewhere, or a question of uh, how to compute the diagram very fast. So, well, they can be both in the same project, right? So, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I, I understood that, uh, this, that this kind of diagram would be probably useful for me. And then I start uh, thinking yeah, this about... This is a new that. diagram and you have to create a new algorithm. Yes, that's my right. problem. Right. So I think that probably the easy answer from what I see uh, is uh, that... At this point, it's it's nice if the diagram has an application. Otherwise, why should you consider it? Uh, from the other point of view, some things are considered an interesting problem for the community. For example, if you have 3D, uh, the three-dimensional space and lines as sites, then nobody knows about the complexity of the diagram and it's simple enough uh, formulated task, right? And it's just going from points to lines, no? If 3D and, li and points, you know uh, the thing, no? But lines or line segments in 3D, uh, nobody really knows and this is, becomes an interesting hard problem for, for the community as it is, even without... I see, I, I see, I see, I see. So this is... So it uh, like like I I as an external to Varane diagram person interpret this uh, your uh, answer as following. So in two D, how to say there are a lot of concrete tasks tasks, but in general theory is well done. Uh, but if you go from two D to three D, then uh, even to some basic questions uh, there are no answers. Yes, I would I would say so. I would say so. So okay, yeah, in 2D, of course, there are some questions left, but this is about shaving log, uh, log factors. And uh, sometimes this is important if there is a proper application. Sometimes, uh, well, that doesn't really... Uh, that, that's look. an exist theory that you cannot do something faster than uh, like... Okay, n log n, you, you did use it to sorting of numbers. Yes, but if you speak about uh, like in some answers for bigger than n log n, yes? Does there exist a, a theory of proven uh, lower bounds for, for algorithms? Well, for, I guess for... Well, the, 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 where is well quadratic, uh, there is a lot of uh, things around these three sum problems. No, like, uh, how does it formulate? Uh, so, so there are lots of, so there is a problem, a uh, threesome, uh, which is, I guess you have a bunch of numbers. So yeah, I, I, I'm afraid to, to say something stupid. Uh, let me just check it. So there is a problem which is believed to be uh, quadratic. And uh, people do reduce uh, fr from it 
to their problems to somehow prove that most likely this is quadratic. Uh, but uh, the, how do you say, the problem with this problem is that uh, there is no proof that this is quadratic. There, there is no uh, better than quadratic algorithm and there is no proof that this is quadratic. So people somehow believe that it's quadratic because uh, they couldn't really uh, do the... <laughs> they, they tried a lot and they couldn't uh, devise an algorithm which, which would work better. <laughs> but... Uh, so yeah, so let me just uh, tell you what is the problem. So you have n real numbers. And, ah, yeah, sure. And you ask whether there are three elements which uh, sum up to zero. And there are, like, really a big list of problems which are three sum hard, in a way. So, which means that uh, if somebody proves that this problem is really, uh, cannot be uh, solved, uh, better than in quadratic time, then those problems also. I see. To, so a lot of problems are reduced to say more classical. Right. Yes, right. Yes. And, but nobody knows the answer to more classical. Right. Okay. So, yeah. More questions? So I'm completely satisfied with the answer. I'm sitting happy. <laughs> yes. So does anybody else wants to become happy? Yes. So the, it seems that nobody else uh, wants to be to be happy. <laughs> so, but hope people. So this means that they are already happy. Yes. So let's uh, thanks uh, Yula. Uh, let's I want to thank. think. Ah, let's thank Elena again. Yes. Thanks a lot.